Alhamdulillah Alhamdulillahi na'maluhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nasta'kfiruhu wa nu'minu bihi wa natawakkalu alayhi Wa na'udhu billahi min syururi anfusina wa min sayyati amalina Man yahdi Allahu falamudilla la wa man yudlil falahadiya la Wa ashadu an la ilaha illa Allahu wahdahu la sharika la Wa ashadu anna Sayyidina Muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluh Amma ba'd Yaqulullahu ta'ala fil Qur'anil azim A'udhu billahi minash shaytanir rajim Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Ya ayyuhan nabi Inna arsalnaka shahidaw wa mubashiraw wa nazira Wada'iyan ila Allahi bi'idhnihi wa sirajan munira Sadaqallahul azim All praises are for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala We glorify Allah We thank Him for His blessings and His favors upon us I testify that there is none to be worshipped but Allah he is alone and he has no partner. And I testify that Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is a servant and final messenger. Ibadullah, my dear brothers and my dear sisters, we are indeed blessed that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala has given us this opportunity to assemble to pray our Salatul Jum'ah to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and this is a, a great blessing because the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he tells us that when we remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala there is life within us. That when we remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there is comfort, there is peace of mind, there is tranquility. And so Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he encouraged his companions and, and that is left as a, a guide for us that in every aspect of our lives there must always be that connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that whenever people disconnect from their creator they are being engulfed in a state of darkness and he, he was sent to remove people from that darkness because at the time when he came, people were disconnected from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. People were connected to their idols. They were connected to artificial things. The real creator, the real Allah who controls the universe, who gives life and takes life, they had no connection with their creator. And so it, it is said that they were living in a state of darkness. When people started to connect with Allah, light came into their lives. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says uh, about or to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Ya ayyuhan nabi, inna arsalnaka shahida wa mubashira wa nadhira wa da'iyan ila Allahi bi idhnihi wa sirajan munira. The, the, the last thing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and we have sent you as an illuminated lamp shedding light 
you, you brought light to the people because you taught them also that they must be connected with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that they must always remember their creator. And that brings light to them. My dear brothers and my dear sisters, we are in the month of uh, Rabi'ul Awwal. It is a very significant, important month in that Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam was born in this month. In the, when he came into this world, it, it was uh, that light that was brought into this world. And so today, my dear brothers and my dear sisters, I, I just want to remind you and remind myself that this man who was the greatest <coughs> that tread the face of this earth, he was indeed a perfect example for us. And Allah says so in the Quran. لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةٌ حَسَنًا Verily, in the Messenger of Allah is a perfect example for you. One of the things that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he taught us is that as much as we strive to encourage people to be connected with Allah and to worship Allah, we must not forget how much it is required of us to inten intensify our worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Here, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, it is said that he was promised that whatever mistakes he has made in the past and whatever he, has, he will make in the future, that he has been forgiven for it. It is reported that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he used to stand at night in personal ibadah, personal worship, with one ayah of the Quran, contemplating on that ayah so much so that his feet would become swollen. And when he was asked, why do you exert yourself so much when you have been promised forgiveness for anything past and anything in the future? Any mistakes? And he says, Afala akuna abdan shakura. Shouldn't I be a thankful servant to my creator, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so my dear brothers and my dear sisters, I, I need for us to look at ourselves. Sometimes we, we get so much occupied in making sure that people are doing the right thing that we, take, we don't take care of ourselves and we forget about ourselves in terms of uh, making that strong connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so, set aside time, quality time. Spend time reciting the Quran. Spend time praying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Spend time away from people and get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he used to offer salat uh, to tahajjud where he is by himself and he is making sure that he is talking to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
So don't forget yourself. Always think about how you can strengthen that connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When we look at the life of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we, we saw within him that individual who was concerned about people, whether it is, you know, your family members or they are not your family. And even though the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he spent so much time and exerted himself so much in giving the da'wah, in inviting people to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, because that was part of his mission. Ya ayyuha nabi inna arsalnaka shahida wa mubashira wa nadhira wa da'iyan ila Allahi bi idnihi and you are a da'i you are one inviting to Allah with his permission he invited people to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but still he had time for his family he, he made sure that there was time for his wives. He made sure there was time for his children. He made sure that there was time for his grandchildren. So much so that it is said that Al-Hasan wal Hussein used to climb on his back when he used to pray the Salah. He had time for them and he used to hug them and kiss them and he used to make sure that he extended that love to them, his family. And there was an Arabi who came, a desert Arab who came, and he saw the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam doing that kissing the, the children. And he says, um, do you kiss them? I, I have ten and I have never kissed them. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, what can I do if Allah has removed that rahmah from your heart, that mercy from your heart? And, and so, my dear brothers and my dear sisters, th there are times when we think about others who are not really our family, and we forget about our families. Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he taught us to make sure that we have that strong connection with our families. And, and I'm talking about the, the near and the far, extended family also, that we, we have that connection because here the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he tells us that the, the one who maintain family ties, Allah will maintain family ties, Allah will maintain ties with him. And the one who cut off family ties, Allah will cut off ties with him. <coughs> and we don't want to be cut off from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he taught us that as much as you will do things for others, as much as you will reach out to help others, you need to look at your immediate, you need to look at your family, you need to look at your family, whether they're immediate or they're extended, and you need to share that love and that compassion and that kindness with them. You need to show concern for them. And, and quite often I say, my dear brothers and my dear sisters, there's so many of us, when it comes to our own families, we, we don't have that strong connection. It is important that we always maintain that strong connection as it has been taught to us by our Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. When we look at the life of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, 
we see the, the focus on being charitable. And there is a saying that when people came to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and they were requesting help, he would never turn them away. Even though he may not have to give to them, he will make sure that their needs were taken care of by directing or asking his companions to help. And so he was a very charitable individual. And he taught us to be charitable. And my dear brothers and my dear sisters, the, the world needs our charity. The, the, the world needs our generosity. Our brothers and sisters need our generosity. And, and we ought to be like the companions of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, where they give preference to others, even though poverty was their own lot, they, they, even though they were poor, they give preference to others. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about them in the Quran and praises them, give them honor because and prestige because they were in need themselves. But they felt that their brothers and sisters were more in need. And so they came to their help, they came to their rescue. And so there, there are so many in the world today, my dear brothers and my dear sisters, especially our brothers and sisters in Gaza, in Palestine, that need our help. And, and it doesn't matter if you have given last year, if you've given last month, the need is severe. And so we need to to follow the practice of our Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as we look back at his life, as we think about him and what he did for humanity. The very charitable individual. That was Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. When, when we look at Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, let us take a lesson from him in terms of how he lived with people. You know, a lot of us sometimes don't know who is living next door to us. Just because that person may not share the same faith like us. But the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he emphasized so much on showing that concern for your neighbors. He says, Man kana yukminu billah wal yawmil akhir he who believes in Allah and the last day, let him be generous, kind to his neighbor. Did he say Muslim? No, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said neighbor. At least get to know the person who lives next door to you. know who he is or she is, what values they have, what needs they may have. You can make a difference. And that's an opportunity for da'wah. Many people accepted Islam in a very silent da'wah. 
that people did not invite them to Islam by saying, you need to become Muslim. But people accepted Islam because they saw their, the, the way that they behave. They, they saw the, the actions. They saw how generous the Muslims are. They saw how polite. They saw the honesty. They saw the compassion, the kindness, and they accepted Islam. And, and so in, in times gone by, thousands upon thousands came into the fold of Islam just because they saw the practices of Muslims. There is one CNN uh, commentator, he says that if a Muslim moves in next door to you, he's talking about non-Muslims, if a Muslim moves in next door to non-Muslim, the property value goes up. And your life becomes safe. Because Muslims have values. Muslims behave well. Muslims protect their environment. Muslims make sure that people who are living next door to them do not go hungry. Because Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says that uh, you are not a true believer if you are filling your stomach and your neighbor next door to you is going hungry. Sometimes we, we forget these teachings of our beloved Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. My dear brothers and my dear sisters, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he, he says, إِنَّمَا بُعِثْتُ لِأُتَمِّمَ مَكَارِمَ الْأَخْلَاقِ Verily, I have been sent to perfect behavior. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about him in the Quran, وَإِنَّكَ لَعَلَى خُلُقٍ عَظِيمٍ And verily you are of an exalted nature, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And, and so the, the, the next thing I want to remind you and remind myself about my dear brothers and my dear sisters as, I re, as we reflect upon this great model, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, let us always remember that uh, we are the best when we demonstrate good behavior. When we have good morals, good characteristics. We, we, li we live in a world in which there, there is so much uh, immorality. People don't care about morals anymore. There's so much hypocrisy. People don't you know, speak just because they want to speak. They say things today and they, they don't really mean what they say. You know, a lot of these elected officials, they, they, they would say things right now and next five years from now, next ten years from now, they would say, no, I didn't support that. I wasn't in favor of that. So many of them are in favor of slaughtering so many Palestinians day after day because they help in terms of giving money to aid Israel, in terms of giving weapons. So many. And you will hear sometime from now, no, we didn't support that. That's the hypocrisy that we have in the world today. That's the morality that we have in the world today. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, you are a moral ummah. You are a people who demonstrate good behavior. And, and that's the man that we follow, the one who came to perfect behavior. So my dear brothers and my dear sisters, as we reflect upon his life, let us make sure that every single day
we demonstrate good behavior it doesn't matter who it is the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he demonstrated good behavior even to his enemies people who wanted to kill him people who hurt him people who did so much you know crimes to him and his uh, companions He still demonstrated good behavior to them. And so when his companions wanted to take revenge against those who did harm to the Muslims, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam cautioned them against it. So my dear brothers and my dear sisters, behave well with one another. Behave well with your mothers and fathers, your sons and daughters, your brothers and sisters, with your neighbors. Always treat people the way you would like to be treated. This was the teaching of our Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. I implore you that during this time, make sure that you, you sit with your families. Tell your children about this great man and how he came and he changed the world. He made the world a better place. And if we continue to follow his practices and we continue to behave like him, inshallah, we will make this world a better place. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us and guide us. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us good in this life and good in the life hereafter. And may He save us from the torment of the hellfire. Akulu kawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum. Wa lisa'irul mu'minil minat min kulli dhamb. Fastaghfiru innahu huwa al-ghafurur rahim. Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa salatu wa salamu ala Sayyidina Muhammad Wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'een Ridwanullahi alayhi mila yawmiddin Amma ba'd My dear brothers and my dear sisters Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he, he taught us not to cling to this dunya, to this world but, but he taught us to make sure that we look for the world hereafter. And, and that was so important in his life that in, in every juncture of his life, he made sure that he reminded his companions about the hereafter. And he would say to them, be in this world as if you are a stranger, or just a passerby. This is how we ought to look at life, my dear brothers and my dear sisters. Always putting something forward for the hereafter, because that's what really matters. The Akhira, it is everlasting. It is better for us. And so whatever happens to us in life, the challenges, the difficulties, we always think about there is a better place and there is a judge who is supreme, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and he is just. We always think about meeting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so Allah tells us 
laqad kana lakum fi rasulillah uswatun hasana liman kana yarju allah who will take him as an example the one who has that hope of meeting with allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and so we take him as exa an example because we don't only look for this dunya we look for akhirah that yes we will meet with allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and when we meet with allah we want our books of good deeds to outweigh our books of evil deeds we want to meet with allah with the, we want to meet allah with a clean heart qalbun salim and the one who will enter the paradise of allah is the one man ata allah bi qalbin salim the one who returns to allah with a pure heart so my dear brothers and my dear sisters spend some time contemplate ponder upon the life of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam how humble he was how gentle that uh, people did not just disappear from him he was soft-hearted law kunta fadhan ghalid al-qalb lan faddu min hawlik allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about him if you were harsh if you were cruel that they would have run away from you but look almost two billion people in the world today follow him because of his kind-heartedness his compassion because of his love because of what he brought to them he removed them from darkness into light may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala show us that light and may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to always have light in our lives may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us and guide us and keep us safe we ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to remove the sufferings of all those who are suffering in different parts of the world especially our brothers and sisters in gaza and palestine we ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to, to grant victory unto the believers we ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bring aid to those who are in need we ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us and to give us good in this life and good in the life hereafter and to save us from the torment of the hellfire laqad amarna allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fil quran al azim haith qal inna allah wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala nabi ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima allahumma salli wa sallim ala abdika rasulika muhammad wa arda allahumman kulafaihi ala arba abi bakar wa umar wa uthman wa ali wa nisitatil baqin wa bashirin bil jannah wa nisairi sahaba wa nitabi'in wa man tabi'hum bisan la yawmiddin اللهم عز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم نور قلوبنا بنور الإيمان وثبت قلوبنا على الدين الإسلام ولا تجعل في قلوبنا غلا للذين آمنوا ربنا إنك رؤوف رحيم عباد الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربة وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والباهي ذكم الله لكم تذكرون فاشكروا الله على نعمه واذكروه على آلائه ولذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون كمثله